My name is John Abrams, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, recent work in our lab on a gene called P53. Um, the reason that P53 is such an interesting gene and a protein is that it is altered or mutated uh, in at least half of all human cancers. So what that uh, suggests to us and uh, many scientists is that um, somehow this gene must be uh, situated at the uh, pivotal position that somehow permits or enables cells to turn from normal cell function to completely cancerous function. And so there's been a lot of interest over the last 30 years or so to understand why it is that P53 is such an important quote unquote tumor suppressor gene and what it normally does to prevent cancers in long lived animals, including humans. So um, for a long, long time, uh, the field had assumed that we had the problem solved. But more recently, several groups have shown that we have not actually been able to explain how P53 suppresses tumors, uh, and we really have not been able to deconstruct what P53 is doing, doing to prevent tumors from forming. So work in our lab recently has uh, raised a very exciting possibility about a novel function for P53 that may help explain how P53 is preventing cancers in humans. So this cartoon encapsulates uh, the essence of our discovery, and I'd like to walk you through it in the next few seconds. Okay, so in this cartoon, we have an example of two cells. On the left-hand side, we have a cell that is wild type for P53, and on the right-hand side, we have a cell that is mutated or absent for P53. And what you can see on the left-hand side is P53 uh, inhibiting something called a retroelement. A retroelement is a form of a mobile element that has the capacity to move throughout the genome and change its positions from generation to generation. And also retroelements have the capacity not only to move, but also amplify in terms of numbers. So what we can see on the left-hand side with the wild-type cell is that P53 inhibits retroelement activity. That means these transposons are now somehow silenced or restrained in the wild-type cell. And in the right-hand side, where we have a mutant P53 gene, what ends up happening is that somehow these retroelements, these transposons, are no longer inhibited or restrained. And in the absence of P53, these retroelements become highly active. And in this cartoon, what you can see is these retroelements become active by actually transcribing, turning uh, uh, that sequence of DNA into RNA. The RNA now becomes reverse transcribed by reverse transcriptase, and these copies now reintegrate or integrate into the genome, causing highly destabilized genomes, which in fact is a hallmark of cancer genomes. Uh, this can also potentially lead to inflammation and possibly sporadic diseases. Hi, uh, I'm Annika Wiley, and John just uh, spoke to you about our model for how P53 represses transposons. And I'm going to talk to you more about how uh, we've used this to probe P53 function in human cancers. And so recent research has indicated a strong correlation between loss or mutation of P53 and dysregulated retrotransposon activity. Uh, for example, we examined Wilms tumors for retroelement dysregulation. And Wilms tumors is a common type of pediatric kidney cancer, and a large subset of these are wild type per for P53, and a uh, uh, smaller subset of these tumors are mutant for P53. And we did immunostaining for the ORF1 protein encoded by the human line 1 retroelement. And we s found a very strong correlation between loss of P53 and retroelement dysregulation. One implication from these studies is that this could be used as a diagnostic tool in the clinic. And so uh, we wonder whether we can detect uh, retroelements in the liquid tumor biopsies or serum from these patients and use this in the clinic to uh, perhaps diagnose or these cancers. Uh, and other ongoing research in our lab um, is trying to elucidate whether uh, retrotransposon dysregulation is a, a driver of the disease or merely a passenger of the disease. This retrotransposon dysregulation is a driver of the disease. We wonder how does it uh, lead to neoplasias. Is the um, 
do these tend to integrate into uh, tumor suppressors or oncogenes, or is the RNA itself uh, uh, creating toxicity or an, an inflammatory response? And this is uh, ongoing research that we're probing in the lab right now. Hi, my name's Amanda Jones. Annika just told you a little bit about the association we've uncovered between p53 mutation in human cancers and retroalimentous dysregulation. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the future directions that we're pursuing with this research. So it's been known for quite some time that retroelements are capable of causing germline mutations. So when a retroelement is mobilized in the germline, it can jump into an important gene or a region of the genome that has regulatory function and cause disease in that individual. But one of the questions that we've been trying to pursue in parallel with our research in cancer is whether or not retroelement dysregulation underlies other forms of diseases. In particular, we wanted to ask what happens when you have retroelement dysregulation in a non-proliferative tissue, so in something that is somatic, terminally differentiated. And this is interesting to us because one of the things that you can imagine is if retroelements are dysregulated in a cell, over time you just have a progressive degeneration of the genome of that cell, along with a concomitant loss in the ability of that cell to perform its function. And this meshes very nicely with a category of diseases which have sort of confounded researchers for a very long time. So these are diseases that are late onset, diseases that are degenerative and progressive, and many of these diseases have very unclear initiation events, so we don't know what causes them. We do know that there's something wrong with a kidney cell or neurons, but we don't actually know what initiated that pathology. And so one of the things that we would like to discover and to understand is whether or not there is in fact a class of diseases that are transposopathies, diseases where retroelement dysregulation leads to a progressive degenerative loss of cell function. And what we're hoping to do is utilize the same sort of methodology we use to investigate links between retroelement dysregulation and human cancer, looking at data sets which were initially developed to assess changes in gene expression between normal and cancerous cells. But in this context, we can go back and we can reanalyze data sets looking at progressive degenerative disease tissues and look to see if retroelements are specifically dysregulated in these tissues compared to normal tissues. Our hope being that if we identify a class of diseases whose disease pathology is triggered by dysregulated retroelements, that we can develop new diagnostics and therapeutics to target this class of diseases.